So starting the lesson and sitting, just begin to notice how your head is resting on your shoulders, on the top of your spine. And just sort of look around the room, up and down, side to side. But as in all of the lessons, it's, we're not, it's not about range of motion for your neck. It's about how are you experiencing the room visually? How are you experiencing the quality of movement in your neck? You might notice, what's the sense of weight of your head? Or is there there a weight to your head as your neck and back supports it? We won't be sitting for too long. And as you're sitting here, notice how you're breathing as you move your head, as your breath full or shallow. You can notice as soon as I mention breath, did you change it? Is there an idea of the right way to breathe? Obviously, you must have been doing the wrong way. And then roll onto your backs and lie down. Just have a sense of the weight of your head lying on your mat. Have a sense of the quality of your spine. So from the head, your neck curves a little away from the floor in varying degrees depending on your unique shape. And then at a certain point, you'll feel the spine come in contact with the floor. And just notice if you can feel the neck curves away. And where is that first point in the upper back that begins to touch the floor? And you can notice, is it near the center, near where your spine and your vertebrae are? Or is it the first point more outward towards the shoulders and the shoulder blades? Follow with your attention down the vertebrae of your spine between your shoulder blades to the middle part of your back, the lower middle back, and see if you can begin to sense the possibility of a curve forward in your lower back. And this may be clearer or less clear for some of you, but just see what you notice. And we'll spend most, but not all, of our time during this lesson lying on our backs. So at any point, bend your knees or lengthen your legs, whatever is going to be really comfortable for you. I'm going to just give you the liberty to bend and straighten at will. So it is your opportunity to take care of yourself and respond to your body's request. And just breathing here, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And follow the passage of the breath. Follow the air in through the nostrils, imagining the nasal cavity, imagining the air going down into your lungs. And then as you open your mouth, just feel the air exiting your lungs, the tissues in your mouth. Do you feel any air across your tongue or your teeth or your lips? In through the nose, out through the mouth. Feeling also, where else is there evidence of breath? Where else is there movement in response or in relationship to the inhalation and exhalation? 
Is there a sense that you can really feel the expansion and the relaxation of your lungs? Do you have a sense at all of the actual muscle that creates the inhalation and the exhalation? The diaphragm, this wide, broad muscle at the base of your ribs, a circular muscle shaped like a diaphragm, contracting. As it contracts, it actually pulls downward, and that downward contraction of the diaphragm is what draws the air into the lungs. And as the as it relaxes, the air just gently comes out, no effort. And then change the style of your breathing so that you're breathing in through your mouth and out through your nose. And as you're breathing in and out, begin to sense the space, the space inside your mouth the space behind your nose and your nasal cavity. I think it's common to think of our head as sort of a dense ball on top of our neck, but there's quite a bit of space in there. And just breathing in and out, and you can alter how you're breathing through your nose or your mouth. Really just appreciate space. And then place the palms of your hands over your eyes. So your left hand on your left eye, your right hand over your right eye, sort of cupped so that there isn't any pressure on your eyeballs. But but try to put out, block out as much light as possible so that it really becomes a deep, dark, velvety black behind your eyelids. And breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. With your eyes covered like this, begin to appreciate the space behind your eyelids, behind your eyeballs. And you simultaneously get a sense of space behind your eyes and the space in your nasal cavity, the space in your mouth. It's actually quite a bit of space in the front half of your head. With your eyes covered, see if you can just gently open your eyes and if it's really blocking out as much light as possible, can you just soften your eyes and stare into the darkness? Soft, open eyes. This time, maybe breathing in through the mouth and out through the nose. Might go in through the mouth and out through the nose for a few breaths and then switch in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just playing with, does it change your sense of space?
alternating your breathing every few breaths. You can close your eyes again. Just sensing the space, letting your hands down to your sides, and just resting. This is one of those lessons that's not so much a a sequence of connected movements as it is really changing your awareness and your sense of yourself. in ways that are less familiar to your brain and nervous system. And then bring your hands gently up to your head and begin to just feel the skin on your scalp and touch it and really sense it as though you've never really felt your own skin before. Maybe you've never felt anybody's scalp before. What is the skin like on your forehead? Is it different than the skin beneath your hair follicles? Just explore your own scalp, the skin, and as you begin exploring, notice if your breathing pattern changes at all. Is your jaw soft? And then very gently begin moving the skin across the cranium, the skull bone. And just feel how does the skin glide? Does it glide easier if you go a little forward and back than if you go side to side? How gently can you move it? And does your neck hold your head in place or does your head begin to roll just a little bit? How much pressure does it take to just slide the skin while keeping the neck really soft and fluid? And as you move the skin of the scalp and you really sense the bones of the cranium beneath, then take your attention even deeper, sensing the space beneath the cranium. So there's actually space between the cranium and the brain, the dura mater. A little little gap there. And then there's these thousands of folds in the brain itself and all kinds of little spaces and dips and curves. Just sense the space in there, the space where that brain lives. Appreciate all the room your skull has for this amazing nervous system. And just keep moving your hands to many different places as your experience of your scalp, of your cranium, of how you bring your attention to the space. Is it different depending on where you place your hands? Notice how you're breathing. Is your jaw soft? Your tongue? Are you able to sense the space in your cranium beneath your hands as well as the space behind your eyes and the space in your nasal cavity and the space in your mouth. What's it like to hold several things in your attention? 
and then just shift your attention to one area in your head. Might be the area just beneath your hands. And see if you can sense that area and add another area to sense. Learning to shift our attention with skill and fluidity is really another hallmark of the Feldenkrais work. How fixated do we get on one spot, one sensation, one idea? And how mobile, how facile can our attention be to many parts? And then just rest your hands down. Take a rest. If you notice any discomfort in your body, you might just want to take your knees a little bit side to side. Some of you might even want to roll onto your side for a moment. Just listening to what the body's asking. Feeling your breath, feeling the weight of your head, if anything's changed, contact of your spine, your shoulders. And then lightly bring your hands up to your head again, resting them on your scalp and Begin to actually move your head through your hands. So this is a nice progression from last week's lesson where we were just rolling the head through the forehead. But now you're going to let your hands roll your whole head a little bit side to side, really attending to softness in the neck, really letting the movement come from your hands, not so much your neck. You can even roll your head a little bit up and down, bringing your chin towards your chest, away from your chest. You can do circles, you can do diagonals, just be playful. What's it like to just let your head go into the most tender, loving hands imaginable, your very own? And there might have been times in your life where your hands weren't so kind. Maybe your hands have worked hard. They've been well disciplined at writing or typing or cooking or cleaning. But now in this moment is an opportunity to really touch yourself in a soft, caring listening way. Gently roll and move your head. And can you feel the space in your cranium as you move it? If you imagine just the space in the cranium, does that somehow make your head start to seem lighter? Notice how you're breathing. You might even, I see some of you doing this, you might even see what it's like, but only if it's easy and your head feels light, but what would it be like to use your hands to lift your head? You might lift it straight forward or a little to the left or a little to the right. But again, only if it's really coming from your arms and you don't need to tighten or contract in your neck or your chest. It's light movements, just playing with this soft, light, spacious head.
breathing. If it is easy for you to lift your head, just notice what pushes down. In order for your head to lift lightly and easily, how do you use the floor? Something's going to press down so something can lift up. And you can really learn to use the floor in a very effective and useful way when you understand this in your system. And then just let your head down and rest. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, following the sensation of the air, going in and out, feeling and sensing the air filling up the cavities behind your nose, in your chest, in your mouth. Switching, breathing in through the mouth and out through the nose. And while doing this, really getting to know your pattern of breathing in and out through the nose and the mouth, we we often have various ways that we create a little bit of resistance for the air as it goes in or out. Does your air just smoothly and cleanly flow in or out or are there little things you might do with your tongue or your throat that might create just a little resistance? And it might be so familiar to you that you're not even able to identify it. And then please roll to your sides and come up to sitting on your mats. And if you need to, if it's just too uncomfortable to sit on your mat, please feel free to find a chair to sit on. And find a position where you can actually rest your head in the palm of your hand. So leaning your head forward and resting it in your hands. Or just bringing your hands up to your head in some way. Some of you have your knees bent and your elbows on your knees. That's kind of a nice way to be able to let your head rest. Just finding some way. And then in this position, begin exploring your scalp and your skin with your hands. And if you need to just use one hand at a time, if sitting feels awkward, that's fine. Again, I had one teacher, and I like that she said this, if I don't say you can't do it, you can So finding a way that works for you, that's comfortable for you, that honors the listening of your body. And there'll be some of you that'll say, there isn't sitting that works for me, so I'm going to sit this one out. Or I'm going to just sit and imagine it. But just feeling your hands on your scalp, first letting your hands move the skin, and then growing that movement so that the hands begin moving the head again side to side or up and down diagonals and squiggles and circles and silly things that four, five, and six year olds might do breath 
full, jaw soft, you might change the position of your hands a few times might have it on your face more, your head more, different places on your scalp. If you've never had a really good scalp massage, you are your own opportunity for this now. Feeling the space in your cranium, letting your breath be full, your jaw and tongue be soft. At some point when you feel you've thoroughly explored playing with your head and sitting, you may lie down again. And again, lying down, please cover your eyes with your hands. Just experience the deep, dark, almost seemingly endless expanse of darkness that your eyes can gaze into. Even with your eyes closed, there's that sense of foreverness of darkness. Just softly let your eyes gaze into that. Feeling the space behind your eyes, and alternating your breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. You might take a few breaths just in and out through the nose, sensing that nasal cavity that the air swirls in and out of. Feeling the air as it passes through your right nostril. Can you distinguish any difference in the sensation as the air passes through your left nostril? Just like everything, they're a little asymmetrical. might try breathing in and out a few times just through the mouth with your mouth open. Feeling the space in the mouth, behind the teeth, your open throat. might even feel a little odd, sort of the lack of resistance. You just purely breathe in and out through your mouth. Where do you feel the breath? Do you feel it on your lips? Can you feel it on your teeth? the insides of your cheeks or your tongue. The roof of your mouth.
maybe your throat. And let your hands rest. And then I would like you to please roll on your sides and come up onto your hands and knees. You might want to have your knees a little bit apart, you know, hip width apart, comfortable position. And you can either, whatever's comfortable for you, you can, you can lean on your hands or you can actually lean down on your elbows. But I want you to find a way to bring your head to the floor. So your hind end, your buttocks will be up in the air and you'll drop your head down to the floor and you'll begin to use the floor like you've been using your hands. So you'll let, you'll move your hips and buttock in such a way so that the floor begins to glide the skin across your scalp. And if it's, if it's really hard to bring your head, your forehead, or the top of your head to the floor, you could use the back of your hands. If you can use the floor to find some very subtle ways to move your pelvis, to slide the skin up and down on your head, maybe side to side a little bit, circles, and again, always listening, making sure you're taking care of yourself. Making sure this is a feasible thing for you to participate in. <coughs> Letting your breath be full and smooth, and your mouth be soft, your jaw, your tongue. And you can place different parts of your head. What if you put the side of your head on your mat and move from your pelvis? And you can begin creating a little more moving. You can let your head begin to roll up and down a little bit, <coughs> side to side. Maybe you can find a fun way to make some circles. And notice if, if you make circles with your pelvis, does that result in circles with your head or not? And if you were somewhere between the age of four and eight, would you find this um, ridiculously funny and playful and silly. So just notice how seriously you're taking yourself. Notice how you're breathing. And every once in a while you can just rest. You could sit back on your heels and take a break lift your head up and then you can come back see if you can think of next time you come back to bringing your head to the floor think of something totally different that you haven't done yet for some of you have you actually managed to touch the very top of your head to the floor again only if this feels safe and comfortable for your neck and your spine and for others of you, have you managed, has your cheek, one of your cheeks managed to find the floor yet? <coughs> or your ear? Or your chin? And what has to happen in your back, in your shoulders, and your pelvis? To just let your neck go and let your pelvis gently but playfully guide your head around in this very unusual exploration on the floor. In this not so linear and sequential Feldenkrais lesson.
Every once in a while it's nice just to softly put your tongue between your teeth just to make sure both your teeth and your jaw are soft. Because if your jaw doesn't get soft and your tongue happens to be there, you'll know right away. And whenever you're ready, just roll yourselves onto your backs again, please. Just begin to feel the sensations that are alive in you now. If you're looking for new, unusual, interesting, curious, pleasant sensations, what do you find? Maybe it's just the weight of your head. Maybe it's how you experience your breath. Maybe it's something unexpected, like how you're experiencing your low back or your pelvis, your chest, your eyeballs. And then one more time, just lightly bring your hands up to your head and Explore your scalp. Explore the skin moving on your scalp. What if your right hand wanted to explore the left side of your scalp and your left hand wanted to explore the right side? It causes an, an interesting, for some of us, can cause an interesting thinking experience, sensing experience, when we cross our hands across midline and explore opposite sides of our body. Notice if it changes your breathing at all. Can you actually roll your head? side to side or up and down if your arms are crossed to the opposite sides. Keeping your neck soft. Your breathing free and full. And let your arms down and rest. When you're ready, just gently roll to your side, but roll to the other side, whatever that other side is for you every time I say roll to your side. And just sitting for a few minutes, begin noticing the things we noticed at the beginning. Notice how your head rests on your spine and shoulders. You can notice how your head moves turns and looks up and down. See if how you visually take in the room is any different than at the beginning of the lesson. And after a few moments of exploring yourself and sitting, come up to standing, see what's new and fresh and interesting. Take plenty of time to walk. See if walking feels different. We'll do a little sharing at the end. <laughs> 